What's up, people? Jacob here again. Another Diesel Life video. Service truck, diesel mechanic, technician. I don't know you know how you want to put it, but we're out in the truck, heading out to a customer in sunny Florida. Well, it's a little cloudy. Part of the it's supposed to clear up, but we're gonna be doing a set of brakes, and uh, I think the truck's a Hino. I'm not sure. But um, it is does have air brakes, so I'm gonna take you guys through the steps. Um, I'm gonna jack it up, do all that stuff, and then I'm gonna show you the way I do the brakes. Um, to set the springs up, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But um, when I get to a location, we're gonna get into this truck. So stay tuned. This side before I assemble it, you can see. The old shoe, it's in a, almost at a quarter, so it's, it's time to be done. So like I said, you come over here, just so you can see a little better, so it's not on it. Let me just come alongside of it. That's all I do. And it, it pulls it out. It's, it's hard to see, but there we go. Okay. See how I went in? And, and you get a screwdriver. It's pretty crusty, but... Yeah, you see how it pulls out? Yeah, so you just, I get my screwdriver alongside it, pull it out, and now it can be adjusted. Some types, are, they're different, but how the, it releases, but these type are like this, so just get on that, knock off some of the crustiness. Yeah. Now this is turning clockwise to back it off. Like I said, depending on the positioning of the slack adjuster, some, you know, how it strokes, it, it'll determine. But you can just watch it. Let me see if I can get it in there. I can see it. Yeah, you see the gap? As I back it off, the gap increases. And so forth, so like on the other side, when I was adjusting it, you want to crank it down until it contacts the drum. Like I said, back it off, but I'm gonna continue with this backing this side off and then get the wheels off. And I'll show you how I take the shoes off. Okay, I'll continue with this. All right. Okay, so I got my jack swapped over. So this is the other side. Now, I use the uh, jacket, I have a spring perch here. You know, because sometimes you try to jack it on the diff, this, the metal, it's thick metal, but sometimes this will dent, you know, so sometimes I try to avoid jacking at the housing, and this is very solid, you know, and I always use a jack stand as well, and it's a little dark, but. air powered bubble gun and really you don't have to go up that high you just gotta get it enough to get the tires off yeah that's it just enough yeah and then the jack in place I have this in the center of the housing. Is this a safety case? You never know. That's it. Right there should be fine. Comes down. All right, so I'm gonna turn back the presser on and uh, get these wheels off. Yeah, much match dread design. Okay. All right, that's what down. I do. I spray a little PB blaster on the nuts. And on that surface right there, you'll see there's another one there. It, it just makes it easier to get the wheels off when you're going to do it. So, have the gun there. Turn on the compressor and get it off. All right, got all the nuts off, turned off the compressor. Now, I would show you me working the gun, but that's a one inch gun. You got to keep two hands on it. So I, I can't 
and these wheels, you know, it's a 33 millimeter socket that takes off the nuts. And see here, I mean, I'm the only one out here. <laughs> yeah. Work truck right there. So, all right, get these wheels off. You see how fast the baby blaster works. I mean, it's awesome stuff. All right, let me get these off and get the drum off and we'll go from there. All right. This wheel over here. Flip around. That is the heavy side of the wheel. All right. Let me get my hammer real quick. Like I said, PB Blaster. That determines before, between a mechanic and a technician. Mechanic will use WD-40. Technician use PB Blaster. Best should do this. All right, get the hammer. <laughs> All right, so like you saw me, I backed off the brake already. So right now it's on there. So I just gotta shock it. So you give it a good whap. Should have moved now. Yeah, get one more. I get this lid off and then I'll show you how I get the shoes off. I just want to show you a quick see that that's brake dust. We don't want to breathe that in. They don't use asbest asbestos no more, but still that is not good stuff to breathe in. Well, I guess it's hard to do it one handed, but I knocked the dust into a rag and then I went the rag down, but you can see some of it came out, but all right. Here's the brake shoes. You can see they're almost at the wear bar, but the lower shoe is at the wear bar. So, you know, that's where the wear mark is when you look through the backing plate. So, what I do to get these off, it's very simple. I go. one-handed I'm gonna work this in pop one spring on get on the other one voila see knocks the springs right off and then it comes right, right there one right there and then just push it all right just at a speed driver. All right, what I'm gonna do right now, get my gloves on, cause I don't want all this dust on me. And I'll get these shoes. I'll show you the new ones and we'll get to put them on. New parts. Now you see here, that is the number. Now you're probably wondering, how the hell you make do with this, you know what kind of shoe it is. Well, it's these numbers right here, 4707Q. That is the shoe. You got a 4515Q, 4515Q Plus. There's different ones. All right. I can't get into every single one with you guys, but. And most shoes are remanufactured, so there's a core charge on them. But this BB230, that's the lining, what it is. Let me get this over for you guys. Brand new shoes. So the hardware kit, all new springs, rollers, pins, anchor pins, all in there. Got that. Like I said, see here, Bendix Basic, 23K. So that's 23 pound for like the axle rating. 
then you got a 4707 decam, and it's the BB230 lining. Some other lock numbers there, but. And depending on the company that reman the shoes and the linings, they might have different numbers and stuff. And, you know, but usually you want to look for the rating, you know, because sometimes, you know, a set of shoes is for a truck. But then you got a set of shoes that are for uh, like a trailer. And so a trailer, you don't need that heavy of it. But also, too, depending on the application, you know, you might be a dump trailer that's hauling heavy loads, and, you know, or a dump truck itself. It, you'll get heavier shoes with a more aggressive lining. So, all right. Those are still hanging out there. Got to get these out. Get these in the box. So I got to get these on. Also, too, I wanted to show you. You're looking at shoe, see that? That means Q plus. And you see on the old shoe, plus. And that's talking about the S cam. Like I said, let, let me get these in the box. Oh, cool, I did it one-handed. All right, yeah, like I was saying, that plus comes down to the S cam. Now, when you look at the S cam, you'll see the thickness here. You know, and that's usually gotta get that checked to see if it's Q plus or not. Usually, I mean, you quick look at it, you see how thick it is, it's Q plus. If, a, if it was a Q shoe, it'd be a lot thinner in the center here and the way the, the lobes are, you know. It, you can't mix them up because it won't get enough brake effort. You know, it won't apply the brakes fully. So, for the new shoes here, get this opened up. I'll show you all the goodies. All right. There we go. All right, so, they brought new bushings. Usually, these are not frozen, so I need to check them for wear. Yeah, they're not bad, so. so those are the anchor pins. As you can see there. One, one, and you could wiggle it a little bit. That's perfect. You know, there's no sense of changing the bushing just a waste of time you know but i have run into ones that the bushings were seized on the pin anchor pins or they're wore out whatnot but, so we'll get the rest of the stuff out we saw on the other part you know i was putting those on i'll show that again two of those let's go back there and you got these are the rollers that roll on the cam, this cam. This is pretty simple. And we came out, you put it like that, give it a squeeze. I'll push it in until you see it go in the detent. That's not there yet. Okay, there it is. Yeah, see, it locks in. As you can see, it holds the roller in. Another one here as well. Like so. so you just take it. A little difficult one-handed. Plus also, I am right-handed, not left-handed. I did put the other one in though. <laughs> All right, see? It holds the roller in place. Now, go back to the bag. Got the big spring. There's only three springs on this type. You got these. This is what holds it. But these, they don't just sit in place. You gotta hit them in. So, okay. Yeah, so just get a hammer. Hey, one more. See, they don't fall out, they, they hold it in. You gotta hit just right in the angle. 
<laughs> yeah, and the other side came out so good. Okay, back on there. You gotta make sure you put it in just right. Get the angle just right. Line. <laughs> you can see the marks right there. You see the couple old ones there, marks. It's gonna happen. Let's see if I get a bit. There we go. All right. See, it stays in place. And now this is where the big screen goes. I like to put it like that, face them towards the roller. I'll put it in. Put that one. Now the different ways of doing this. This is the way I like doing it. Cause some guys, what they'll do, they'll put the shoes in place with this side with these in, clamp them down, then they'll leave these two rollers out, and then they'll pry the shoe away. Well, they'll get the spring in place because your rollers are not there. It'll allow it to clamp in further. And then they'll pry and then put the rollers in. I don't like doing that personally because if the bar slips and you're trying to put that roller in, you pinch your finger, it's not very good. So what I do is I just put it like this. I'll grab both, pick it up. I'll set them up in there real quick. And then I'll show you guys the way it's sitting once I get it up in there. You see, I got that one shoe laid up in there. It's on the anchor pin like that and it's in the s-cam and then uh what i'll do bring this one put this one in place and then all i gotta do move him put him in the position. so he's close see right there it's close he's right there and then little shove and you see he's in place he's on there you see, and this is the way I do it. Like I said, other people put the, the shoes up with the rear springs in, and then they'll leave these out. So this will touch the S cam, and then they'll put this spring in. But sometimes this is difficult to put this spring in. I've done it that way before, trying it out. The other guy says it's quicker, but for me, this is the fastest way. Like you saw right there. I just put it up, you know, everything. I mean, I'm showing you guys this, you know, help you guys appreciate it because, you know, this is my job and you know the only time i get to do things like this is when there's no customer around <laughs> so i can do a nice little quick video for you guys and show you but uh yeah right now i'll just go and get these in and these like i said hang here and they go in that spot right there and then there's the, the other one it's on the back side like so like you saw me do on the other one but um yeah, I'll get these on real quick and then uh, I'll go from there. All right, like I said before, I just go get my vice grip on it. Can't find my other ones, so I'm using my needle nose ones, but still does the job. Clip it on like so. And you saw on the other one, I, I just go like this and pry it on. So I'll get these on real quick. I showed you on the other side. All right, there we'll they go. go you there. see, they're both hooked in. Like I said before, some guys will put these springs on and then set the shoes up like I did. And then they'll put the other side together. But, um, yeah, it's, it's the way I do it. it. Comes out a lot better. It's a lot easier. You know, I mean, you could use spring pliers and grip in here and put it on. I've used them and broke them and using them for other stuff. But, you know, you got to find other ways to do it as well. So the, the vice grip method works fine. You know, and there's another way you can use a screwdriver and put it in the hole and wedge it in and stuff. But, uh, yeah, these are the shoes right there. And you saw me put the other side together and adjust the brakes. So I'm going to get this finished up so I can get out of here before the rain comes because I can hear thunder. It's a ways off. So, but if you guys like this one, you know, there'll be more to come, so... Just stay tuned. All right, so like I said, just stay tuned for more. I'll be doing more videos. Like I said, I, it's kind of difficult for me to work these in, you know, but when I get a chance and I'm by myself and I can really 
explain and show you guys. You know, I, I try to get some in-depth stuff, but then, you know, I know some guys are just starting out and they, they want to know about this field, the diesel mechanics. So, you know, it's something like this. You know, when you're first starting out, you're going to be doing a lot of brakes and stuff and PMs and whatnot. So just please like, comment, and subscribe. Look what I just did. <laughs> See? You wear the gloves and you try to stay clean. <laughs> All right, please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more. These are life. Please line up the holes. See the other rim back there? You see back there? It's hard to see. Let me go to the other side. Line up the valve stems. That is a pet peeve of mine. Here you go. You go check the air pressure. See the inside one, the valve stem? It's right here, holes. This is rim only has two holes in it. And these are real easy to, you will put the, the line it up and the valve stem be behind there. So you, you can't check the tire pressure, you know? And right away you gotta take the wheels off and do that stuff. But I just wanna show you guys that real quick. All right, and look at that, it's coming. Yeah, so nice. Look, it's partly cloudy and then bam, that's coming my way. I'm going to try to hurry up and get out of here. Hope you guys like that little footage of the jet. Uh, get all my stuff picked right, up. Thanks for staying to the end. You know, also another tidbit. Sipping on the drink, sipping on the drink. Strawberry lemonade. <laughs> Stay hydrated. It's hot out here. Also, another little tip. I usually I'll run two of the lugs in just to get the wheel fully seated. So I know it's not binding up or nothing. This one's not running yet, it's just, I thought it more to seat the wheel, but. Yeah, then once I run the two and get the wheel fully seated, and then I go and I'll do this one, this one, and then start pattern, boom, boom, come like this, you know, and go start pattern and crisscross. You don't want to start and go like this around because you're going to putting the wheel in a bind and then once they put a load, the wheel loosen up and the lugs come loose on you. All right? Just want to let you guys know that.